Hello, denizens of the internet. My name is the Paleo Pro. How are you doing? I'm good. And, well, today we have a rather special review. As this was a late Christmas present that I very recently received. Um, let's just get straight into it. So today we have Pterosaurs by Mark P. Whitten. Now, this book is very special because it's, well, the best book that I know that's about pterosaurs. Hang on, let me go turn on my air conditioner. Boiling one. Fuck it, sir. There we go. It's on. Come on back. Yeah, I'm back. Either way, this is a very good book simply because it's probably one of the most, probably one of the best books about pterosaurs of all time. Um, so, Title is Pterosaurs. The author is Mark P. Whitten. On the front cover, you can see a beautiful painting of a Nyctosaurus. That's right. And on the side, I think this is Cynopterus. I don't know. And I see teeth. Yeah, there's teeth on there. It's some kind of rent from ankle. You should be able to see on the front cover. Now we've got some Ethicarus, some Ethicarus, some Ethicarus. Still nothing about. Oh no, here we go. Jacket designed by. Hang on, come on. Jacket designed by C. Alvarez Gaffin. Jacket illustrations front. Nick Tesaurus with, with the wind in its picnic fibers. R was Germanodactylus. And here we have some Geostambergia with its Harlem. Um, and yeah, this was. What was it? Germanodactylus. Um, and it was published by Princeton, and yet again we've got that nice pterosaurus font on the side, and written at the top, and it reads in the back. This book is both academically interesting and truly fun to read. It has a difficult balance to reach, but Witten does an excellent job of it by using a light-hearted, informal writing style in combination with a well-referenced, serious scientific review, an invaluable reference. And that was a review by Michael Habib in the universe, from the University of Southern California. So yeah, that's very interesting. Um, Proving the China, okay. Um, and on the inside of the jacket, we have Ornithochirus. Focus. Hang on. I need to get some lighting editing. Hang on, I'll be back. There we go, we've got a little bit of lighting, and the natural light, as good as it was, kind of to get rid of it. Um, so, this is Pterosaurs. Um, so, on the inside, with the jacket. There is one with the Kairos. Very nice pterosaur. And I reckon we'll adjust this camera. We'll turn it around to the light. I reckon that'll work better. And indeed it is February. Happy February. So yes, inside the jacket there is indeed one with the Kairos. Kind of can't adjust it any more than that because then the light will be blocked. Um, but the, on the jacket it reads, For 150 million years, the skies didn't belong to birds, they belonged to the pterosaurs. These flying reptiles, which include the pterodactyls, shared the world with the non-avian dinosaurs until their extinction 65 million years ago. Some pterosaurs, such as the giant ashtarchids, were the largest flying animals of all time, with wingspans exceeding 30 feet and standing heights comparable to modern giraffes. This richly illustrated book takes an unprecedented look at, the, at these astonishing creatures, presenting the latest findings on their anatomy, ecology, and extinction. Well, it's not really the most recent, but um, this book was illustrated in 2013, so it's kind of may, might be outdated. Pterosaurus features some 200 stunning illustrations, including original photo, uh, including original paintings by Mark Witten, and photos of rarely seen fossils. After decades of mystery, paleontologists have finally begun to understand how pterosaurs are related to other reptiles, how they functioned as living animals, and, despite dwarfing all other flying animals, how they managed to become airborne. He can explore the fossil evidence of pterosaur behaviour and ecology, learn about, the skeleton, learn about the skeletal and soft tissue anatomy of pterosaurs, and consider the newest theories about their cryptic origins. This one-of-a-kind book covers the discovery, 
history, paleogeography, anatomy and behaviours of more than 130 species of pterosaur and also discusses their demise at the end of the Mesozoic. The most comprehensive book on pterosaurs ever published, features some 200 illustrations including original paintings by the author, covers every known species and major group of pterosaurs, describes pterosaur anatomy, ecology, behaviours, diversity and more. Encourages further study with 500 references to primary pterosaur literature. Mark P. Witten is a paleontologist in the School of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of Portsmouth. He has served as a technical consultant for Walking Dinosaurs 3D and many other film and television productions. His illustrations of pterosaurs, dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures have appeared in numerous publications, including science and newspapers around the world. So that's what that reads. Just hang on, I'll back. I need to put... I just need to do something real quick. Right, now we're back. And I just opened the window because I felt like it. I felt like the light. And what much of a difference does it make? Not much, so we'll just pop that to the side. Sorry, light. Here for another video. Um, we'll move the calendar over. Because now, we're going to take a look inside. So once you open the book, you can see the flap on it. Oh yeah, I want to I see what it looks like without the thing. Just a brown book with pterosaurs on the side, unsurprisingly. Written pterosaurs, Princeton Publishing. Nothing on the back. Okay. I know these these covers seem really bland without anything, but what are you gonna do? Popping the jacket back on. Because it's cold. It's cold here in Australia! Can you believe it? It's Friday the 3rd of February and it was raining earlier. It was raining! How? It's supposed to be summer just because. Now, Mother Nature, if you're watching this video, just because it's February doesn't mean it needs to start getting cold almost immediately. And I'm pretty sure that is some form of a code. Um, I think I might lower this camera a little bit. Oh, that high. That's highness. There, I reckon that's pretty good. That's some form of an ethic code. I think it might be in a Hungara because of the um, the notch here. But either way. Once you open it, you can see. Pterosaurs, Natural History, Evolution, Anatomy by Mark P. Witten, um, with two um, Mythicarids and a Mythicarus. And dedication, it's to my family who can finally be content that I took their advice and wrote and illustrated a book. And to Georgia for putting up with me and the funny old dead reptiles and always going on about. Copyright 2013, but thanks for the Contents, the baby, I guess in some sort of. Um, or something, maybe a Tina Kesmod, maybe a Tina Kesmod, and we've got all the contents, if you want to pause and look at it, you can do that now, preface, acknowledgements, and the first chapter is leathering and harpies, and here we see a wonderful illustration of two Ramphorhynchus flying through the sky, and then lots, lots, lots of pterosaurs, Ni let's see how many I can name, so we've got Nyctosaurus, um, I think that's Hatsigoptrix, Tupuwara, um, that's Cavaramus, and Eurognathus, Pteranodon, one of the Kairos. Oh, what's that one called? Um, it's in here. I put it in my notebook. Where are you? Uh, let's see, where are we? I remember once I see the name. Sycnoramphus, that's what it's called. Sycnoramphus, yeah, that thing. This thing with the weird face. Weird face boy. Him. 
a weird fossil. I reckon we'll come back to that. God, this video has been taking 10 minutes already. God, time just chews itself up, doesn't it? By the way, happy Friday. Well, it's Friday. I think that's Boreopteris ramphorhynchus. I think that might be Protinosaurus. Ramphorhynchus. That's Dimorphodon. Sorry. Uh, I don't think I can name the rest. That's some form of some some work. That's Pterodorstra for sure. That's some form of Tapihara. Um, understand the flying reptiles. Let's see. Oh, it's Pterodactylus. Oh, that's fair because they didn't. Oh, that's fair. I didn't recognise it because it had the massive keratin extension in the crest. That's actually beautiful. A modern reconstruction of the first pterosaur known to science, the Tenochasmatoid Pterodactylus anticus. Although known since 1784, many details of its anatomy, including its head crest, keratinous beak tips, and webbed feet, were not found in fossils until this century. And then it's distorted fossil grain. <coughs> Oop, Dimorphodon, let me see. Batsos. Oh, no. Hypothetical pterosaur ancestor. Oh, no, it's nearly 12 minute long video now. The pterosaur skeleton. That's the skull of Sungaripterus. Yep. Sungaripterus skull. Now, where did I actually want to go? Where are we? Soft bits. Campylognathoids. Run for ink in the day. We come up for a day, I think? No, that's not it. Darwin up for should have known. That's what that was. Dang it. Oh, I want to go back to this actually. It's amazing though how much, how hypothetical these keratin structures are, because that's just a skull of the less like the fossil skull but that's a hypothetical reconstruction so that's all that on the end it's all the added bits as my friends like to call them yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's. now they, these things scare me more than um what do you call it these things scare me more than as dark as do you <laughs> steer that for nah man they're like the shoe bills of their time very powerful jaws Oh wow, <laughs> it's just teeth, it's literally just teeth. This is my first time scrolling through this book for a long time. I think the last time I read this book was at least two years ago. There it is, it's our friend Weirdness. A portrait of the late Jurassic Pterosaur sinking around for Suavicus, complete with goofy teeth, a divergent anterior jaw, and a head crest that looks like a silly hat. This is not a joke. A real animal once looked something like this. See figure 1910 for the proof. Right, let's go find figure 1910. Oh, there's the Where is it? 1907. There it is. 1910. There's the skull. Oh wow, that is a weird looking skull. And you see how much they like. Hang on. <coughs> oh, bless me. Um, how much? How? I wouldn't say over exaggerated, but it's very out there with how hypothetical they can be. Where are we? Sungaripterodia. How is Ferbator? I was wrong. Where? Ah, oh, the Tuppy Harrods. Here we are. Tuppy Harrods. Ah, oh, we already passed it all. Oh, we already passed it all. Oops. Oh, we were already in it. What is this? Dupendaculus is doing its best Clint Wood Eastwood impression. Clint Eastwood impression. <laughs> wow, that puts it into scale as to how big Dupendaculus is. It's huge. Wow, that's huge. And I'm guessing that's just like an average sized woman. It might be Mark's wife. Um, but that is massive. It's a big pterosaur. Oh, two cards. Shall we up to the... Ah yes, the Thalassodromidae. Oh, pardon me. 
Gnarly, pterosaur, badass, the last of Jonas, Sephi, ambush is a baby Spinosaur and lower Cretaceous Brazil. I actually have a hard copy of Mark Whitten's revised thing on um, The Last of Jonas. It's very interesting. Highly recommend you read it. Um, then we've got Chupishwara. Aha, as dark a day. Now this is where I really wanted to go. Um, so these are Hatsidopterids, as it, had, sorry, Hatsidopteryx Thambama. Very interesting. Um, bear, bear. Okay, I'm going to just say it now. As dark as the best pterosaurs, and unless you provide solid proof, you're wrong. It's just the way it is. You all know that's the truth. The giraffe, the hat seat, and me. So I'm guessing that's a giraffe, that's a hat seat, and that's Mark. I'd be a bit surprised if that was the giraffe. <laughs> I'd be a little scared. I was right. I had to go up to It is. I had to go up to Um, yeah, it's dark. It's, yeah. Some of them aren't even. Oh, yeah, footprints. That's a person's footprints. Wow, they have weird feet. And there we go, the rise and fall of the Terrasaur Empire. Oh well, then that's it. Oh, so now that we're under the book, now we are. So now that we're at the end of the book, it appears that now we're at the end of the video. So I hope you all liked this video. I enjoyed flipping through the book for 16 minutes, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.